With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Being Irish and Catholic, I don't handle, I don't handle anything, anything of any real importance well, Gavin. So uh, it's nothing's off limits for me. I'm okay Perfect. to talk about it. So whatever you want to bring up, I, it's not off limits well, for me. No, no worries. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Mick Tully from World of Martial Arts Television. And uh, not often we do this, but we're having a repeat prescription, pardon the pun here, with uh, my dear friend, Gavin Mulholland. And without sounding too flippant, um, anything uh, any, anything life, life-changing life happen in that period, Gavin, <laughs> that you'd like to share with yeah. us? Yeah, so, um, yeah, back in... July, I think it was, got diagnosed cancer, uh, quite a nasty version of cancer. So, so kind of everything changes, everything changes in one hit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's been a, a, it's been an interesting time and I documented most of it. I committed to documenting most of it. Yeah. Well, you, if, you don't, if you don't mind me stepping in here, it was really, it was really, uh, first of all, inspiring to watch it. Um, Uh, just all unfold on social media because you put it on mm. and with the caveat that I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for anything. I'm not looking for anything from you guys. Cause you know, I sent you a few messages. Like, I can only send you the, the prayers of a lapsed Catholic mate. Yeah. Much, not much right. more than that. Send in love and no more. And you said, that's all I need. But it was, uh, it yeah. was really, really interesting the way that you did it because uh, from my perspective, looking at it, it was like, This is a guy who's trying to make sense of it all, and instead of keeping it inside, he's going to throw it out there into the ether. And not looking, as I said, you weren't looking for sympathy. And what I really was impressed with, it, mate, was there was no sugar coating. And when it was bad, mate, I hope this doesn't demonetize us. It was, I won't, I won't swear. It was effing really bad. You know, some and, of the stuff that, that was what got me. And that's because it was. That's because it was. So I, I. When I got diagnosed, and I likened it in, in one of those things, I likened it to drowning, and, and, and that's how it felt. And I, it felt immediately like, you know, you're sailing across the top of the world, and you've got the same problems everyone else has. You know, you've got your heat in, and you've got to feed people, and uh, et cetera, make a living. And, um, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, bang, you hit cold, deep water in the mid-ocean, and you go under. And... You can't breathe. You can't breathe. You don't know which way is up. And then just out of just your natural instinct, you surface. And and what happens then when you break the surface is... It, so that, that, actually, I'll, I'll dive <laughs> for a minute because there was one... I did this dive course in Australia, which was great. I did my dive course there. And I jumped off the boat and I, and I looked down and all these fish, like hundreds of fish, were racing straight at me and so of course i cacked myself and what it was was as i jumped in the dive master thrown loads of food on me so all the fish were rushing straight at me 
what this feels like when I surfaced, everyone is throwing advice at you. Yeah. Everyone's throwing this, don't eat this, eat that, do this, do that. And they all mean well, but they're still on the boat. And that doesn't mean I don't appreciate it, but they're still on the boat. There's only one person in the water. And I realized then that, you know, if, if I try and grab all of this, you're flailing around like a drowning man. The, the drowning is a really good analogy and it's stuck. And so I consciously made a decision there and then I'm letting all of that sink. That is all sinking to the bottom. I had a mantra, trust the gods, follow the science. I'm doing whatever the NHS tell me to do. And what that meant was, it simplified things, but I've Googled nothing. I've Googled nothing of this. I, if you sort of swim a bit, you know, 100 yards that way, then change direction, change direction, you're going to end up back where you start. You can't get anywhere. And I thought, I don't know whether I'm swimming into deeper water or if I'm swimming for sure, but that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. That's my way, and that's where I'm going, because anything else doesn't make sense to me. Just go, go back a little bit, because we talked a little bit uh, offline about this. And it was something that you said that you hadn't mentioned before, which really intrigued me, which was how your body knew before you knew and yeah, then went to great lengths to stop you. Yeah, it did. From looking for so, help. So, so first off, I'll say the reason I went public was that, so I have said this before, but I'll say it again, it's because I was ashamed of it. And the reason I'm saying it again is because other people would feel the same. And I think, particularly people like us. I was embarrassed by it, and I am still embarrassed. You know, I'm not through this. I'm not through this physically or, or you know, I, I think I've, it's taught me a lot, but I'm not a monk. You know, yeah, it's taught me a lot, but I was embarrassed by it, and it's not supposed to happen to people like us, which, of course, is ridiculous, because who is it supposed to happen to then? So I know it's nonsense, but, and I know it's random, which is why it's so frightening. That's why everyone's terrified of it, because it can take the strongest of us, but I was embarrassed by it. And because of that, I didn't want to talk about it. And, and that was the bit of insight that, that triggered me to say, OK, that means you're hiding from it. I can't hide from it and fight it. Those two things are incompatible. The only way I can fight it is to flush it out in the open. And the only way I could see of doing that was to go completely public, which is why I went public. So in hindsight, see, I don't have that sort of regret that I didn't, I didn't do the bit that people do where I think there's something wrong and I don't go to the doctor because I don't want to know. I didn't do any of that. When I realized something wrong, I went. And... 30 days from me stepping through to the doctor's surgery, I was diagnosed. And 30 days from that, they started treatment. All NHS, and that's, that's pretty good. But in hindsight, I realized there's something else going on. So when I was 50, I had this big party, big thing. We played our big Irish do. We got, I had this pub, and a massive, right? So Charlie, my wife, said, I'm 60 this year. All right, I was 60 this year. And she said, right back in February, you know, what we're doing, let's, let's get it organized. And then right back then, and this didn't seem connected to anything. I said, no, I'm not feeling like it. I don't, I'm not feeling it. I don't, I don't want to do anything. And that isn't me at all. Because, you know, I've got the chance of a big party, and I'm the center of it. You know, I'm going to take that. <laughs> Usually, yeah. Um, usually, yeah. And I said, no, I'm not feeling it. I'm not doing that. I don't want it. And then at summer camp, a summer camp that we have every June out in the woods, we have four or five days out there. Um, I was kind of melancholy there. And I spoke to Dan, Dan Lewis, who, who I run the association with. And I looked around it and I was saying, I don't know if I'll be back here, Dan. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, I don't know. But the really big one was the day the day we're leaving, I've, I've gone around to check the fire. That's because, you know, we, do, we have a big yeah. piss up the night before we leave. After all the train's done, people are there till daylight. You know, they don't go, well, yeah. not me, yeah. but <laughs> people are up till midnight, up till midnight, up till daybreak, I mean. Um, so I'm going to see if it's all tidied up. And the fire, it's all being tidied up. And, and, and a guy, Mike Thornton, was sitting there, sitting around the sort of embers of the fire. And I went and sat with him. And he reminded me this other day that, I don't really remember this, but I said to him, as we're sitting there, I said to him, I've got a bad feeling, Mike. Something bad is coming for me. Wow. And he said, what do you mean? I said, I don't know. Something bad is coming for me. And this was two months before I was diagnosed. Right. So there's that. So in hindsight, my body knew before I did. But what was really, other, the other thing, and this completely fascinated me, I, I, I did psychology and worked as well, psychology of sorts for a what, long time. And uh, but what I had was 
radiotherapy and chemo every day, both of them every day. They absolutely kicked the shit out of me, absolutely battered. And, and it was like getting up and going to get the shit kicked out of you every day. But so it, the chemo was intravenous to start with, and then it shifted to these little pink pills. After two weeks on that, I went to get these little pink pills and I felt physically sick just looking at them, physically sick, like vomiting sick. And I'm holding them in my hands and I've got, because it's poison, right? And I've got to take these, so I'll whack them down. But that, that was interesting in itself. But what the really, really interesting bit was another two weeks on, I went to get those tablets and I got a full on, full adrenaline drop wow. just at the side of them. And I was like, whoa, because I think one, I mean, I don't know how I would have got through this without my martial arts or this fire, because one of the things that martial arts does to us is we, we, we can look at ourselves, right? We, we can look internally and we can separate ourselves and watch ourselves from above in terms of a fight. And, yeah. you know, you can look at yourself from the outside in like you, this. So I know the other thing it does is, and with that and door work on it, I know what adrenaline drop is. So I know that it in itself isn't fear, it's your body's fear response. So so when you wasn't afraid of these pills, and I was just like, whoa, because what's happened, right? It's my body, I'm taking poison, I'm poisoning myself, right? And my body said, don't do that, don't take that stuff, that's horrible. That didn't work, so it said, so I tried to make me feel sick. It made me sick, that didn't work, so it tried to make me afraid. And that just blew my mind. It just blew my mind. And there was one other instance as well, and it's the phrase scared stiff that I've used since childhood. Well, it happened to me. Wow. Day 19, I was sat outside the hospital and I couldn't go in. I, I thought that I can't, I can't go on. I can't do this. I can't go in there. But I sat outside on a bench outside the hospital. But even when I got my head straight, which I did, you know, it's like, okay, well, got to go. Got my head straight, went to go in, body wouldn't move. I could not physically stand up my legs my body would not pick myself pick me off the bench i couldn't it wouldn't move and wow. literally scared stiff even when my head is straight so it wasn't that i wasn't sitting there in terror i had been but i was like okay let's go no nah. yeah. so how did you how did you get past the freeze point then or the scared stiff point it it it, it drained it it drained it just i just I was like, because it's because again, I put that, this down to my martial arts that I'm able to sit outside and, and think, well, you know, what the fuck? Come on, <laughs> come on, yeah. what are you doing? Let's go and, and see it from a sort of external position. And eventually it drained and I could get up and go in. And, um, but it was a good five minutes that five minutes beyond. I mean, I was there for more than five minutes thinking, I can't do this. But five minutes when I decided, yeah, let's go, it took five minutes just to to get my body working to the point where it would stand was that the body's self-preservation right kicking in to stop you or how how much of that is that martial art mindset that we have because gavin we, we we've been in this game that long both of us right you know you know yourself um, um as we've got older we've we've learned like the some of the stuff that we were taught on day one, you know, the Thai sabaki, you know, the, 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 just basically the footwork, just don't be there. You know, Miyagi, do, it's Miyagi karate, you know, from karate yeah. too, isn't it? It goes, if you're not there, you can't fight. And yeah. as you're saying that, I'm thinking, it was a, is that you, it was that your mindset going, just avoid it, avoid it. Or, you know, that's why, that's yeah. why you ignore the signs. Or was it your body just going, no, no, mate, come on. I think it's the latter. I, I think it was my body saying no. And I think what, what so I, I found all of that totally fascinating. The other thing that fascinated me was that, it, you know, you're, that your conscious mind having this control was really fascinating. So I absolutely think it was my body saying, don't go in there. Don't go in there. That's really bad. And it must be what addiction is, right? Take heroin and your body's saying, come on, that's what we want. We need some of that. Let's have some yeah. of that. Let's have some more of that. Put that in your body. That's great. Have some of that. I think that's what it is. Just the opposite side of it. Um, and I've been on morphine, and they did say there's a good chance of coming out of this um, addicted. But I absolutely think that was my body just saying no, nah. and it took my conscious will to to push over the over the edge there to move. And I think to say talk about the fight or flight. 
just real quick, the actual order should be freeze, flight, or fight. That's the order. Yeah. Freeze is the most common, right? That's the yeah. most common one for civilized people. And I, I, yeah. I use that word guardedly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. soft yeah. soft is another probably a better one but people yeah. that are unfamiliar with any level of violence will freeze they won't even run away the people they talk about running away you won't run away a you can because you're fat and unfair and you're going nowhere but b you won't it won't enter your head you just freeze uh, fight gavin, is the you, last thing gavin you're talking to a guy who spent the first 16 years of his life in that freeze position mate yeah it was it was <laughs> I, I yeah i, I that's Reason I was well, not fit, not first 16, but up until about 14 and a half, 15 years of age. And then obviously, then I was full of rage because I was like, So all I have to do is slap this guy once and he'll leave me the fuck alone. And I was like, oh, I wish somebody had just told me that. You know, why have I spent all these years in abject terror and then realized the yeah. action? Well, that's, you know, I think, I think the thing that gets you out of that terror, and this is why I, I maintain that our children should be fighting each other. I've been to school, I think we talked about this last time and told the yeah. school that I think my, my child should be fighting, is that the realisation that getting punched in the face doesn't hurt or even getting beaten up doesn't hurt is liberating beyond, beyond expression. That's the, stuff oh, that, yeah. that's the stuff that leaves you alone because people are scared of getting hit. And also, if they don't get hit, the first time you do get hit outside, you haven't got a benchmark. You don't know if you're hurt or not. How do you know? How would you know if I've hurt you or not? You've never been hit before. You're exactly right. Because the minute you get, I, I say it to kids all the time, the minute that you get hit in the head and realise that you won't die, it's liberating. It is, and it's, it's one of the things Goju is quite good at. And I know a lot of people like the top pace of BJJ now stuff. You know, they like that little slap and a fist bump and, and all that's to de-escalate. All of that's to say we're just having a little, we're having a laugh, don't worry about it. And, and that's the ethos of BJJ, where, whereas we're completely different because it's like, it's like, and to, to go to hard, so the Jew in Goju, of course, is the same Jew as in Jiu Jitsu. It's the soft yeah. bit. Go means hard, that's first. So one of the things we get out of the way very quickly, which does lose a lot of students, admit, but they get hit, they get whacked. And, yeah. and that's right from the start. And, and the point there, right from Kyoshi Kim, you say, if they get hit outside, I want them to. To, even if they've never had a fight. Now, I never knew anyone that didn't have a fight growing up. I didn't know that was possible, but now they arrive there. Yeah. And they've got to be think, what was that? I'll get worse than that three times a week in yeah, the dojo. Yes. I'll get, what was that? And Because <laughs> they've got a benchmark against with, and then, then, then they're not scared of that. And that, go in, in, in our philosophy of Goju, happens before any levels of skill. Just to get back to... Um what you've been going through recently. I, as I said, it, 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 I don't even want to say it. You know, no. that's how scary cancer is because it literally is the conversation killer. Because the minute you say it, and it's so, like, it, 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 you know yourself now, no one ever speaks about it until they've got someone close to them that's no. had it. And then it's like no. this massive secret. You go, so wait a minute, is this like on the underbelly of life? That It's like the elephant in the room. Yeah, so, which is the other reason I, I, I documented how I was feeling and what was happening to me. Mate, some of the stuff you put down was like, like there's talk about bearing your soul. And then, you know, like I said, you, like the, the, the great thing about it is you came up with some stuff, which I won't, I won't lie, I had to chuckle to myself, you know, especially when you, you know, you were going into the hospital. It was like, how do I explain to a guy that if he doesn't get me to the hospital in less than two minutes, I'm going to shit myself all over his taxi. So, of course, yeah. that... I, I couldn't help but laugh. But there was funny stuff in there, you know. There was genuine... I, I, I never wrote anything thinking this, I, I'm going to make this sound funny. It, I only put stuff in there that made me laugh. Like like the last... The, the, the ones recently where, where I went in to come checked up because one of the horrors was from my upper thighs to belly button was just... the worst, They say the worst, it'll be like the worst sunburn. So that all split, ripped. That was red raw. From the inside was like I had actually been flayed. All the, all the lining of your bowel all the way through was gone. It was just raw. So any time you went to the toilet, it was just screaming agony. And you have to go like six, seven, eight, ten times a day knowing it's coming was. And I'm not, when I say screaming agony, I mean, if Charlie and the kids were not in the house, I'm screaming, screaming at the top of my wow. voice, screaming. If they're in the house, I'm weeping. Well, I'm not talking about curled up in the shower tray, sobbing in agony. Wow. And uh, 
So, but so so they've gone to see the this that 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 keeps going after they stop doing the radiotherapy it keeps working on your body splitting these so all my any any clothes I had on would stick so to these wounds which are open wounds which meant in the morning I had ten seconds before I think I still got ten seconds before I think uh, got cancer but I'd have to get hold of my shorts and rip rip them off where they stuck to the wounds overnight and so you either do that slowly or you rip it off yeah so. So, so what? Did, yeah. So you have to make that sort of decision as to what you're gonna, how you're gonna do that. So I went to the. There's, I've got the. the he's not a surgeon. He's a Mister. You know, the oncologist guy, the, the yes. top guy. And there's a. And there's a. Uh, there's also a nurse there with him. So I've gone in there, and he's. And I said, he said, how's it going? I said, yeah, I think it's healing up quite well. The skin started to heal up, thankfully, after a couple of weeks after it stopped. It got worse after it stopped after the chemo, the radiotherapy. And he goes, can I have a look? So I said, yeah, so trousers around your ankles. You haven't even got the decency of taking them off. You know, you've got zero, you know, you, you, it's the most humiliating it could be. So on the on the bed, he has a little jiggle with my bollocks, has a look around, turns me over my side, and he's had a look, and he's seen the skin. So he's muttering to me, and he said, okay. So he looks up your asshole. He's looking at the skin, see how it's healing. And he said, okay, very nice. So I said, thank you very much. <laughs> he didn't, but, he didn't, but he didn't laugh, right? He didn't yeah. laugh. So anyway, so I pull the trousers, I'm going to sit down, and, and the nurse then says to me, she said, can I, can I ask you something personal? And I pointed at the doctor, and I pointed at the bench. I said, what, more personal than that? <laughs> like, <laughs> more personal than that? Yeah. And it, again, she didn't laugh. And she said, um, she said, oh, right, well, it's, it's a lot of men have um, like a problem getting erections, you know, after the sort of uh, the radiotherapy and stuff. Have you had any problems? I said, yeah, the problem I had was not getting erection when I was on the radiotherapy table. And oh, the right. doctor who'd been really, and both of them stopped and went, really? I said, no, not really. It was fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> Again, oh, neither man. of them laughed. Neither oh, of them laughed, which just makes me worse. So there was funny stuff all the way through it. You know, that's yeah. probably I was not getting erection, really. No, not fucking really. It's fucking <laughs> awful. I got I got more important things to worry about than getting yeah. getting hard on right now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. there was always funny stuff in it. And I think you know, I'm like a, you know, I'm Irish. Funerals are just, you know, the tears would be tripping you in funerals. You're just yeah. laughing. It's so embarrassing. But you know, you find, and also I think again, I put I like this down to my slides. You find that humour, that dark humour in hardship. You know, when you when things are tough, you laugh about them or you don't get through. And, and I think that's one of the things that helped me through this was seeing the funny side. Like I said, nothing I wrote that was funny, it was all stuff that had made me laugh. It, 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 Cancer is such a strange thing because it, it literally, it, everything, it, like, it, it is truly a cancer because it fucks everything up. Right? Yeah. You know, your work life, your family life, because nobody, nobody's unaffected by this. Can you, no, explain, I, I, can you just tell me a little bit about that? So I was aware from the start that this affects a lot more people than me. A lot more people. Every, the, the shockwaves radiating out from this this have been immense. And I know it's affected a lot of people, not just my family, not just this, I just wide. And the support I've got is a reflection of that. And that that even that was funny with the bit about that it keeps going. So I, I was after after the radiation stops for another couple of weeks, it keeps burning in way inside you. And um, that was funny also because I was watching Gordon Ramsay with my boy Tiger because we're like someone else getting shouted at, you know. And um, <laughs> he was cooking steaks and he said, Gordon Ramsay was cooking steak. He goes, once you've cooked a steak, you've got to take it off the heat. It's got to rest because it's still cooking. And Tiger said, that's you. That's you. You're resting. And it was exactly that. I'm still cooking. Right. How much? First of all, did your martial arts help you? And secondly, how much is this? Because this is like a proper brush with death. You know, it's not even a brush. He's got you in a, He's hit you with a gag. Oh, he's, he's, he's got you in he's a headlock. Right he's right here. Oh, he's, he's jumping. He's gonna, he'll jump on your back and get you. So, yeah. but without waxing too lyrically, you know, the existentialism of it all, you know, how have you, how have you got your head around that and how are you dealing with that? So... So it is worth saying that this is ongoing. I, I don't even know if this, if the, what I've been through has, got, has worked. And if it hasn't worked, that, that's unthinkable because they can't do it again. 
you know, they cannot do it again. My body won't stand it. It would just break down. So that's unthinkable. So it's worth saying I'm still right in the middle of this. I'm through the yeah. phase of treatment, but I'm right in it. Um, it's, it's, I, I don't, like I said before, I think that, that sort of, I, one of the things that, that shocked me was how much, and I hadn't realized my own view of self was built on my own level of physicality, which is nice. Large. I didn't realize because, because that's the thing. First thing it rips away is who you are, right? This is, you know, who am I? If I can't do this, what, who am I? What am I? I left, you know, I left everything to do this. What? And it wasn't just sort of teaching karate that I'm talking about. I'm talking about that, you know, if someone needs help, if someone needs their car pushing, if somebody, if some kids are getting bullied, and then I'm there, I'm going. That's me. That's I'm the one to go and sort that out. If the tube, you know, if there's an incident on the tube and we've got to get out by going through the tunnels, I've got a torch. I'm, I'm. That's me. I'm, to, I'm going to be the one taking yeah. people out there. I'm the only one that's going to be bandaged someone up. You know, I, I see that as our, as black belts and martial arts. I see that as our responsibility. Yeah, I see that as it. You know, I think one of the things as martial arts you've got to realize is the police can't are not coming but nor is the ambulance and nor is the fire brigade so you have to you know do your first aid know where the fire escapes are have a ladder under your bed all that that's to me is part and parcel the same thing so i hadn't quite realized how strongly that's how i saw myself until it was gone and then what am i and i said the other day you know it's a, probably a really bad for yourself because it's going to go anywhere right you get older so it's probably a bad for yourself. So there was that. Then in terms of how it helped me, I think it's almost for me, I've always, I've always been a very practical martial artist. And I've always thought, I mean, I've written stuff about karate is just fighting. Everything else is bullshit, which I don't agree anymore. But I wrote that as a second Dan. And I, I think that's how second Dan should think. I think for them, it should all be about fighting. But it's almost like it's all been leading up to this. It's all been, because what, it teaches you to do is to look inside is to look at your is to see is to isolate body now and see how it how it all works and what you're doing and it was the it's a three-pronged attack that really really wiped me out there was the pain and i thought i knew pain before and i didn't and i thought i really thought i knew pain there was the exhaustion and there's the sickness so those three things sickness pain and nausea, uh, nausea, pain, and exhaustion. It really was like fighting an entity because one of the, one of the good things that the martial arts have allowed, I can isolate the pain. I can I can isolate that, and and again, step away from what the, from what that feels like into just thinging it. So it makes sense, you know. Yeah. What what is this? It's just a thing. I don't, you know, it's not going to stop me. But it really felt like every time I did that, the others would ramp up. I remember getting this big multiple one time with there was a, I think it was eleven against three of us, and one of the, one of the three was was my brother, one of my brothers, John. And there was another guy that we were with, and the way these guys were fighting these eleven, there was something that they some race thing. Although we'd been nothing to do with that, but we came out of the club. They, they didn't want to let us out of the club because they'd been in trouble with these guys in, but I said, we're leaving anyway. There's us three and three girls. And as soon as we let out, one of them smashed a, 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 a um, fence pole over my brother's head. And, and then, but the way they were fighting, so we were backing up, we fighting. They would swarm, they'd isolate one and swarm them. Yeah. And so we were backing up, backing up, backing up. And then, and then John saw that the guy that we were with had been taken down, down the road, so we had to run back up and boot our way through that lot and get him and yeah. back up. And, and so they were really trying to swarm us. And that was, um, that was kind of interesting because that's what this felt like, was if I could isolate one, or I could isolate pain, exhaustion, and nausea would ramp up. They'd, 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 it was like it was physical. And I know I'm seeing that through this lens. And if I turn my attention to that, the pain would ramp up. Uh, and it was overwhelming and I feel like if I'd been better martial artist I could have controlled that better you know I could do it to a degree but I'm not yet good enough but it was that that internal manipulation and and also you know uh, you know also uh, my my one of my my instructor Kim 
Kershi Kim, he, he came and he was talking about, you know, meditating and stuff, which I've been doing to just, you know, but then he was sort of pushing energy around to the pain spots. And I thought I'd sort of doing that anyway, but he just taught me through this breathing stuff. And I, I thought, yeah, okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of, of dismissing him a little bit and I shouldn't because he's always no. been, he's always, they're always right. The way. Yeah, they're the always problem. right. So yeah. I sort of partly like, okay, you're right, I'll do this. And the pain went away and I was like, oh my God, what oh, yeah. was that? That pain just, it worked. And that is all part of that internal stuff. You know, I'm just, I'm writing more, you know, I did Four Shades of Black, which was, which, which is the yeah. book I wrote from. Great goes book. Up to Black Belt. I'm just getting towards the end of More Shades of Black, which is taking it to sixth down. And it's mostly around the kata and, and what the naming of the kata implies and, and stuff like cipher means flow. And, I, and previously I thought that was just the flow of the kata because it's a beautiful kata, which you always see in turn. And then as it comes to that's just the first stage of it. And that's the first step of it. The second step of flow is that flow between techniques. And that's different from just putting a sequence together. It's, it's yeah. techniques that should work, but you've checked it. You know, you're good at this. So you, so you blocked it effectively. And I don't mean block by block. I mean, you checked yeah. what I was doing. So I've got to do something else. So it's this flow around that cipher. But the last level of flow is this energy flow in your body. That's what the kata is opening the door to. And, and you know, and block, and, and as martial artists, we're trying to block that flow. Now, you can, I, I, I have to say, I don't believe there's anything magical in martial arts. And I do think the stuff that, that science hasn't yet sorted out, but I'm 100% convinced it will. There's nothing outside of physics. It's just maybe we don't know it yet, but it will, like chi and all that stuff. It yeah, will sort that out. So, Kudos to you for how you've dealt with this situation, right? How much of this, how much of your training has got you? We like because mentally, I'll tell you right now, I think I'm pretty tough, but I don't think I'll be able to handle what, what you've just dealt with. I think I'll be doing a lot more crying. Well, the, the, the best bit of advice I got was from Dave Arnold. I don't know if you know him, he's yeah. an eighth day and going to one of the original guys. And uh, I said to him early on, I want to face this with courage, and he said. The other stuff. Well, okay, do that or don't do that. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, well, you can face it with courage if that helps you, and if it doesn't, you can bore your eyes out every day. All you have to do is face it. And you know, it's a very um, a profound man. It's really profound, and it was it was the best bit of advice I was given. Was just do it. You just got to do it. And 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 I've 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 said before I've thrown up before a fight, before physically thrown up and gone in and won. And it didn't matter. You know, you've just got to do it. And I think, so one of the other things about sort of where the martial arts have helped is I think, I've said this, I think there is, a, in the early stages, the Western questioning mindset gets you further quicker in the martial arts. There is a time around third, Dan, Where I think where it gets in the way, and it, it is around stuff like chi and 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 what well, the trade secret is chi is the the word that we use when we run out of English. Yeah. You know, we don't it doesn't work. You know we don't know what to say. It's not that we know what chi is. It's just that I can show you stuff. You know I can I can you think, well, someone will hit you one day from no distance and you'll be what the yeah. where did that come from? And they'll say apologetically chi. It's like what well, and that means they don't know which is fine, you know, and, and all the rooting stuff in Sanchin. And so there comes a point where that Western mindset gets in the way and you have to put it to one side. And I'm not talking about just blindly believing. I'm talking about believing yeah. what just hit you, believing your own body, believing what you just felt and not saying, well, how did that work? Where did that come from? Is it because you placed your foot there? Is it because it's none of that? Because you say, no, it's none of that. And in the end, you'll just say, yeah, it's because my foot's there. There's nothing to do with that. It's to do with this internal energy. And um. You have to trust what you feel. And that really goes back into what I'm saying, that, that the training that's trusting what you're feeling of, of, I knew there was something wrong. And when I got diagnosed, I, it was horrific, but, I, but not as horrific as if they'd said, no, that I can't find anything wrong. And I know this has happened to a lot of people. You're fine, because I know I'm not fine. I know I'm not fine. I want you to diagnose and I want you to fix it or, or kill me or whatever yeah. is coming next. 
that's what I have to face. I don't want you to say there's nothing wrong with me. Because I knew there was something wrong. And I could feel it. And I could feel the, the ebb and flow of my courage and my capacity to go on. In fact, the, 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 I had 28 days. It was six weeks because I had weekends off, which were just waiting for it to happen again. There's nothing off about it. It's literally like going to get tortured. Like I can't, you know, I, it was like, you know, so having the weekend off before you go in on Monday really isn't a weekend off. It's, it's great that you know to go, but all your mind is on that. that that's what you're, you're, you're going to have to go back and face that again. And the parallels with the 30 man were so, so close to me. Yeah. If I get through this, I've got this tattoo I'm going to do on my inner forearm, which is, you know, the, do you know the five bar gates, the tally yes. gates? You know yeah. them, I'm getting 28 of those done, but day five and day 19 will be in red because that's where I crumbled. That's where, that's where I just couldn't. Those were the two that, that rocked me. And Dan Lewis, I don't, do you know Dan? I don't, I don't know, know if you do. So Dan Lewis, he runs DKK with me. He's out in Bristol way. And, and I just texted him that day on the day 19 and I said, major wobble. And he just messaged back, Sergeant Wibble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but do you know what? That when we spoke earlier, when when you said it, I said it, I said day eighteen or nineteen because that was the day. And, and it sounds really bad from my perspective because up until that point, I was like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. And then that was the first time that you actually and you because it, it, it was because you put it up on Facebook because you, you put right. it, yeah you put it up on Facebook. And I, was so like, I don't know what I put up on what I didn't. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but you did. You put it up on you put it up on Facebook, and it was really good because it was it was that moment where it was like he'll get through this because it was like yeah, it was like yeah. If you'd have gone back, he came back, made a wibble, wobble, and you were fucking ah. Uh, then it'd be like oh no no, I don't know here, <laughs> not not right. But like you just you just went yeah, and I had smiles to myself. I can't remember what, exactly what you did, but it was like it, 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 if you don't mind me saying. Very interesting that you're saying about the tally gates because when you're talking about that, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is guy in solitary confinement just marking off the days, getting the calendar going. That's exactly, exactly where you're at. Exactly really? where you're at. And day, day five was interesting because in the, in the 30 man, they have to declare at winter camp the year before they're going to do it. And then around January... When they come in, un unworn, unknown to them, there's five black belts waiting to fight them, and they kick shit out of them. Right? And it's designed to terrify them. It's because at that point they think they're doing all right. They think they're training hard. They think they're on track, and they're not. So the five men that they do unofficially in January, they are always battered to fight because they're just not ready. And it's designed to terrify them into training properly for the rest of, to get to June. Yeah. And so it, it was no, or at least. Uh, the, the similarities, it was day five. And what happened on day five for me is I looked up. I I am genuinely, people say to me, what are you doing for Christmas? And I genuinely say, I, I, I'm not looking that far. I'm looking to tomorrow. Now, and I'm not lying. I'm just looking at tomorrow and getting through tomorrow. Even now, I've got to get through tomorrow. And there were times when it wasn't even tomorrow. It was hour by hour by hour. And one of the horrible things about uh, I made a lot of horrible things and I think Charlie my wife and kids suffered from this definitely and other people was that you are in solitary like I said before everyone else is still on the boat it doesn't matter how and I don't get me wrong I, I appreciate every single message of solidarity every prayer and it's a it's a, a source of genuine pride to me that people are praying for me in churches in in mosques in synagogues genuinely people have buried blades in the stone circles for me there's been witchcraft done and and people who believe in nothing still saying something that is a real source of pride to me that that, that those people are doing that for me and people say to me you know i don't know what you believe and i'd say I don't, it doesn't matter what i believe thank you if you're praying for me that's got to be good right that energy you know and i've had stuff people sent me crystals and sent me stuff and, and i'm not particularly you know Believing of that, someone sent me this, you know, some right. runes put together, which I'm much more close to. But but the power is in the thought, right? The 
power is in the fact that somebody's sent this to me. Somebody thought, took the time to think about me and they've done something. That's the power. Right? And so it affects this, this sort of isolation is real. Even in the cancer ward, nobody else there was doing both chemo and radiation every day. Nobody seemed to have that. They did, if they're doing both, they seem to do chemo every 30 days. Why, the, why am I doing it every day? Why yeah. am I crawling in here in this state? And, um, and so that isolation is true. And you are just ticking those days off. You are just ticking those days off because nothing else. I mean, I'm still, I can't work still. I'm not aware. And, and, you know, Goran set up a, a fund me page for, which, which was embarrassing to me at first, but you know what that's done and people were generous beyond anything that I could imagine and definitely beyond anything I deserved was it allowed me to not worry about work for a while to put that aside, not yeah. worry about that, to get taxis into the, the hospital when I needed them and taxis back. And that was all down to yeah. you guys and everyone that, put any level of money in there yeah. and that was amazing and and that's just again it's because it does affect so many more people than me you know and you, you talked about the warrior i hate that phrase i hate people who call heroes i hate the warrior phrase i'm not a warrior not a hero and and i objected initially to saying it's a battle and i said it's not a battle but i was wrong it is it's just not quite the one i expected but it's absolutely a battle and in your mindset so I don't know if you remember, Mick, I'm sure, actually, I do know if you remember, of course you remember, my brother died a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. uh, my plan has always been, when I got to 60, to bail out of sort of commercial work, um, focus just on karate music and get a part-time job in a garden centre or B&Q or something like that. But when my brother died a couple of years ago, I just bailed out there. I just bailed out of all that and did pretty much end up where I was. But, but unfortunately, at that point, then COVID hit, music disappeared and karate went online. It was so, it didn't work very well. But, yeah. but that was my... My kind of thinking and my plan was just to bail out of everything and and, and do that. So so that has, that's happened and happened a couple of years before I intended it to. I found myself thinking, if this had happened two years ago, I was completely covered. I had healthcare at work and, you know, good healthcare, bupa, good salary, I had money and, and healthcare. And I, I found myself thinking, God, if that happened two years ago, I'd be fully covered. And then I thought, what the, what are you doing? Are you saying that you want this to happen two years ago. And of course you don't. Of course you don't. Not only do you not want it two years ago, but their science is two years further on. So that's the battle with your mind. Just which one do you go with the, oh God, for me, I was all covered two years ago, or don't be a toaster, you know, it's two years, medical science is two years further on. That's the battle. And the real battle, the warriors are the NHS, they're the, they're the warriors are the people that are fighting this, that that's their livelihood and their life. They're the warriors. I, I, I still don't like the term there, but if anyone is, it's them, right? And I, I, I feel guilty because these, these are the people that we, you know, kick around and chuck their books on the floor when they're going and take the piss because they're doing the homework, right? And now yeah. I need them. Now I need them. Yeah. And I'm that very, you know, yeah. the, that's the, the key... people that are fighting it. Not me. Yeah. I'm not fighting. Yeah. I, I've got no capability of fighting it. My physicality and my my martial mindset, I believe 100% has got me, can get me through the, the treatment and has allowed me to, to, to deal with treatment. Unfortunately, it will not make a difference to the outcome. That's not under my control and I don't know where that's going yet. I've always looked to you as an example to follow and then to see you going through this. You know what it's like? That's, that's the one. When you see friends of yours going through stuff, it sounds really bad. No one ever admits this, but they go, shit, that could be me. And that doesn't take oh, yeah. away from any sympathy I have for you, but it's that whole well, self-preservation. It's been interesting to me, Rick. You've been quite apologetic in, in this yeah. interview. A couple of times, I don't remember in the first interview ever saying, I don't mind, don't, you know, you say, okay, I, I apologise. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And that's interesting to me. That's, it's a way, it, it, the way it affects people, it's, it's, it is a taboo subject, you know, and I've said you can talk about anything and people, not only, people, also the other thing that's happened is people kind of, they've said to me, you know, they've got some serious self issues themselves and they're like, that's oh, nothing compared to what you, you know, they, they're, you're embarrassed about their own, but everyone's suffering is real, right? Everything, I said I didn't know pain and I believe that now, but at the time I thought I did, you know, it, everyone's suffering is still genuine. It's still right. You know, it doesn't have to be compared to something else. And that's what people do with it. 
And the other thing I'll say about that, about the physicality stuff, is people, and I, I, I said this originally as a sort of joke, and then I ended up believing it. And then people say to me, oh, you don't look 60, you don't look 60. You look really good. And then, uh, and then I said, no, this is how you're supposed to look. And, I, and now, now I believe this. It's like, no, this is how you're supposed to look. And I know this is not the time, because I'm so, you know, to say it, but... No, this is what you're supposed to look. It's just that everyone else looks so shit because they've yeah. done nothing since they left school. Yeah. Exactly that. <laughs> so, so just that helps, right? And it, and the other thing I'm aware about is, and I was aware of this when Mike died, you don't measure a life in, in its length. It's in the quality. What have you done with it? Exactly. And the other thing that this has taught me, that I've been taught because of this, is my my definition of a martial artist has changed slightly and I, and I have to hold myself to a higher standard on the other side of this and it's people like Georgie Andrews um, like Dave like uh, Tony Christian uh, that just and, and even sort of let's it's just this definition they are absolutely hard as nails but with a heart of gold and a generous spirit and and I got to work harder on the last two you know, I, I'm good. I'm good with people close to me. Yeah. But what I've realised is, is that, that people, a lot of, lot of people not close to me have, have put a lot of money in the pot or they've just messaged and stuff. And I have to hold myself to that standard, that higher standard of widening that ring. I mean, I've, I've, I've sort of heard the phrase before, but anyone can be nice to their friends, right? That's, anyone can love their family. That's, that's, you know, you're not doing anything. Yeah. But, you know, push that a little bit further out. And that's when it really kicks in. And, and I will hold myself to that higher standard on the other side of this because, because I've been shown, I've said to you before, you know, all I've done is hit people and be nasty to people all my life. And all I've got back is love. It's just, yeah. <laughs> just bizarre. It's paradox, right? You were saying about the apologetic thing, but I wanted to make sure, you know, first of all, that you were calling everything just online. But then when we're doing this, it's been a bit funny for me. I won't, I won't lie to you because it's like, you know, I hope that everything works out and it's great. But as you were saying, you don't know. And this is this is the thing. And this, I only came to this. I only came to this literally realization, as you said to me, Mick. It's quite interesting. You've apologized, and I'm thinking, fuck, man, he's right. That this Zoom is magic, man. He knows, yeah. And then I'm thinking, but why am I apologizing? And it's like this going. Because I don't want to be a dick the last time I ever speak to this I'll guy. tell you why you're apologising, is that you're still on the boat and you know it. Exactly, I know it. Exactly, I know it. And not only that, it's like, I'm looking there going, shit, man, that guy's in there. He, and, he, you know, he's treading water at the moment. And there's nothing you can do other no. than what you've done. And I can't jump in either. No. Because I jump in, what am I going to do? I'm going to help you. You can. You know, I'll just... I'll just end up like Kate Winslet on that fucking and, door and do you know what? in Titanic. Do, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? That, one, one of the things that... I really appreciate is because, especially English, they don't, they, you know, they, they, they really don't know what to say in any situation. And, and so, like you, I think you allude to it, what can you say to me? What can you say? Especially that first conversation, there's nothing to say. So I've really appreciated the people that have upped and said something, knowing that there's nothing to say. I've really appreciated that. They've said anything at all because I know how awkward it is. Just anything, just saying anything. And and the other one that I've really appreciated is I get told, I said from the start, I don't want to hear your story about your friend with cancer. I don't want to hear it. And I don't want your advice. Don't want any of those things. No disrespect. Don't want it. And I get told every day how to cure cancer. Every day I still get messages. And the people that have really impressed me um, are the people that I know think eating a guava half or a mung bean is going to cure me. I know that's what they believe. And it takes a massive act of will to not say it to me. And I've sat in their presence and they haven't said it. I know Charlie's got to them and threatened them, but, you know, to, to <laughs> not say it. And, you know, it's the same with the Jehovah's Witness. People say, oh, they're really pissing me off. They come around the door. They believe that you're going to burn in hell if they don't warn you. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you believe. That's what they believe. So if you believe that, would you say nothing? You couldn't, right? You've got to go around not feel so annoy them, right? You've got to, because they're going to burn. If you don't, that's yeah. their mindset. And so the people that believe that they cancer be can cured if I if I do it at some level of nonsense and not say it, I've been grateful for that. You, you, you know what? If you want to know the truth, man, 
uh, this is by the way by the way me being a bit of a chicken because it's when you interview people it's dead easy to to wrap it all up at the end of it is really really easy because it's just a so what's happening yeah so uh future plans what's going on yeah well, you, where do you see yourself in five years time exact exactly that shit right so there's no easy way to wrap up something like this all it is first of all wonderful to see you right if there is anything like anybody like i think you've covered everybody thanks wise and everything like that but you know well that that has I, to go I, to everybody you know I, I, the, the the breadth of it beyond sort of karate beyond goji throughout martial arts just that i really felt that people coming together and and just just words of encouragement you know and and we talked about death, Sanjay. Now I don't fear death. I genuinely am not scared of death, but I am scared of the consequences of this not working. That's what fear. That's what scares me. Not death. There's worse things, yeah. and to have this the level of support that people said. I'm not talking about just financial, although that's been that. You know, you can't get away from that. I have needed that, and it's embarrassed me a bit. But and I've, I sort of my first reaction is no, 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 I don't know, but I do, and so that's been brilliant. But oh, every message of support, every prayer, every sign of solidarity has has genuinely lifted me so so this is the first time i've known that prayer has power first time i've known it and i don't pray myself but that but i know those things have power because because they've lifted me just knowing people are doing those things have lifted me so for you and and some of the gifts of you know the stuff that people are giving me it's just beyond yeah like i said i need a higher standard people are giving me like i've had a like a gift tokens for like cinema and a Nando's just brilliant for when I feel better. <laughs> yeah. Like someone sent me stuff to redo the guitar. Uh, someone redid the bike. Someone came in and did a bit of work on the house. Someone like yourself that said, just came around and said, look, is there anything I can do? The house needs done. I said, well, there is one thing, you know, just people giving of themselves to do something and, and people bringing food around. That was amazing. Just bringing food, yeah. you know, bringing those, the, the um, the dish dash Galabrea clothes because they didn't stick to me in the way other clothes did well, with you because you've always been so stoic and you've always been so like right down the line on it it's it it's been inspiring to watch for the simple reason yeah if i could if i can if i i don't ever want anything like this but if i had to deal with it about 10 percent of like just it, it sounds mad when i say this i don't want to sound cliche but you know what you were saying? Yeah, you wanted to face it with courage, right? But what it was, is it, it was courage under grace. You know what I mean? Grace under fire, where it was like, it, it, all this shit's going through. And, you know, what if you want to know, this is the bit that you'll get, Gavin. It's like, because it's mad. Because to me, you're just still Gavin Mulholland. You're the same fucking guy. But the crazy thing is, I re-watched our first interview. Right. And it's like... That was, and again, this is mad. If you ever get a chance to go back and have a look at it, with yeah, the less well. safe, with the less safe, fair attitude that we both had, you know, where it's like, yeah, but we're fucking yeah. invincible, mate. Yeah, you look a mess, mate. Yeah, all sixty-year-olds should look like this, you know, all of that. And you look at it, you go, fucking hell, man. The rug can be pulled out at any time. Right. You just, you just don't know. Absolutely, and that—that's that's that. Well, that's that's the other quite a martial thing, isn't it? Because you're not winning you don't win a fight until it's won if it's on the street or in the mats or thing it's not won till it's won you know you can be winning and then it's pulled out from under you done you choked you know it's gone and the other last thing i'd like to say is really that i was looking forward to 2022 22 is my lucky number and again mindset i was thinking um, but then maybe it is maybe this has been my lucky year because maybe i don't know yet this is the year that i survived this and and what i've seen of people what i've seen of myself the sort of love and kindness i've seen as i said this before I've, i can handle violent people and it must be something wrong with me because i'm really bad with kindness but i've never seen kindness and compassion as part of martial arts before and now i do Podcast Network. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? 
they're also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.